Good morning, everybody. Uh, I don't think there are any announcements. I haven't looked at the back. There, there aren't any announcements, um, particularly. As you all know, we're now in interregnum. We have um, Annette as often as she could possibly take services for us. Otherwise, it's Ben and me until after Christmas. So uh, we, we need to be brave and stick with it. I do want to say, though, happy wedding anniversary to Gemma and Ross. They got married with us a year ago today. That's right, isn't it? So uh, please, we'll remember you in our words. I may not actually verbalise it, but I'm not saying um, So that's just something. Um, thank you for being with us. It's really, really special. Let's start with our first hymn, 112, My Song is Love Amen. Um, sorry, and we're leaving out some verses. Um, we're going to omit four and five. Sins and wickedness. 
and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, Lord, and thy merciful ones, is to offend us. Spare thou them, O God, which we confess as laws, which restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant unto this merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter from a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, and may be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
first read, the first two readings. <laughs> From the first book of Kings. Mm -hmm. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. <coughs> but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aaron. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimishi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ended the first lesson. <coughs> The epistle is written in Romans chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his Son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here in the epistle. We're going to stand and say the psalm, and then we'll sing to the end, and then we'll have the gospel reading. I can explain it all later. <laughs> so the psalm's on the back of your cue sheet, and if you could say the words in bold, please. I will listen to what God, the Lord God, is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to them. Truly, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth, truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall go down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be halfway before his feet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be. World will end. Amen. We're going to stay standing and sing the TDM now. In the middle of your service.
after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up, the, went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried, cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, say, saying, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and, began, and, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ended the Gospel reading. We stand to sing the Jubilati Day. Lord be with you. And 
Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done. in earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we we forgive them that trespass against us. And and lead us us not into temptation, but but deliver us from evil. Thank you. 
day in our hearts and minds and all our thoughts, and that everything that I say is acceptable in your sight. Amen. So it's been an interesting three readings matins, partly because I think I think God has something to do with this because it's so funny. everything that I was thinking so will say that it was meant. Um, in the readings that we heard, the Old Testament reading and in the Gospel, we have Elijah and then Peter needing to go alone to talk to God, needing to talk about their fears um, and, and doing that alone. And God knows what we need. He's there for us at every moment. Um, and I wanted to um, to, to talk to, um, using the uh, Alison Morgan's book, which I've used before, The World Turned Upside Down, which is using the Psalms. Um, and she talks, uh, and I want to read for, from a section where it's talking about um, Psalm 119, which isn't the psalm we had today, but it fits. Um, and it's called Teach Me Your Way. So I'm going to um, just, just read to you from that. How then should we live? We have seen the Psalter offers us a choice. Will we be like the green tree or the dead chaff? Or will we follow the path of the Lord? Or will we pursue our own? We have reflected on the choices of those who have gone before us. And we have pondered the starkly different outcomes which followed from the decisions that they made. It is clear that if we choose the path of the Lord, we will, to use the terminology of the Psalter, be counted amongst the righteous who receive God's blessings and support. If not, then among the wicked who must struggle on alone. The distinction may trouble us at first, for we are likely to feel that we cannot comfortably describe ourselves as righteous and that we should not rush to label others as wicked. And yet, properly understood, these two terms are profoundly helpful, for they refer not to our moral status, but to our fundamental allegiance. To the psalmist, the righteous are those who prioritise their relationship with God, depending on him for love, forgiveness and protection, <coughs> and seeking to live in a way that honours him. The wicked are those who prioritise their own interests, relying on their own resources and pursuing their own agendas. To align ourselves with God's righteousness is no small undertaking, and the psalmist knows that if we are to live as God's intent, we should need both help and guidance. Guidance which God provides in the form of the Torah. In English, we translate Torah as law. But it is best understood not as a legal code, but as a body of teaching and instruction to be followed in the context of a relationship with a faithful and loving God. What it means to live by Torah is a theme which runs throughout the Psalter, all the Psalms. First flagged up in Psalm 1 and repeated in Psalm 90, it is its fullest expression in 119. And then I want to go on talking, reading from later on in this chapter. In our forgiving, unforgiving culture, any personal failure is frequently the beginning of an end, an infringement of the law, a moral lapse, an error of judgment, can lead to the abrupt termination of a career, followed by the public shame the psalmist always talked about and clearly dreaded. With God, however, it opens the way to a new conversation. For God is interested not in condemnation, but in restoration. Indeed, the greatest biblical heroes turn out to be flawed characters whose lives have been marked by personal failure and deliberate transgression. And as Charles Swindle has pointed out, God does, not, does some of his best work with those who think they are finished. So just think of Peter at the moment he doubted when he was walking on the water, he sank. And what did Jesus say? Oh, Peter, have faith. So that's that point, isn't it? The same is true today. And then she gives a quote here from Jonathan Aiken, who was an MP um, a while back who went to prison. 
and he said, I went through defeat, disgrace, divorce, bankruptcy and jail. And this was after he was convicted for perjury. Um, and he wrote a book and he talked, he became a Christian in, church, in, in prison and he talked to lots of people across the country. I know during the 90s, late 90s, I think it was, and later. And he went on to say, I know what it feels like to be submerged in the slough of despond as a result of one's own misjudgments, mistakes and failings. How did he cope? Well, one book I would advise anyone going through uh, this sort of ordeal to look at, Jonathan said, is the book of Psalms. One of the things about having a great fall is it makes the change so much easier. And Jonathan said he found it rather exciting. So we think of the Psalms as being something we chant, we get wrong, but actually they've been written for centuries and have given us this tremendous advice. Um, and on that note, if you take your service book and turn to the back of the service book, we'll say together the prayer to Benedict on the back, please. O oh, gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our next hymn, which is 128. All glory, Lord, and honour. And we're going to read four, seven, and eight.
the Lord our Father. We ask that you fill the church in all the world with the zeal of the gospel, and that your word may go out to everyone. We especially pray for churches where there is fraction, help people to see your message and not their own arguments. With eyes fixed upon our Saviour, may your people never fail in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, that you calm the storms, the wind, the earthquake, the rain, and the silence. And through the word of truth, bring a new vision of Christ, who is close to all, but unseen by many. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, that you grant that we shall live in peace with all around us, both locally and internationally. We think of all those war-torn places, Ukraine, Yemen, Syria, and we especially think of those in West Africa at this time. Give to our community the spirit of mutual love, that all may be one in you. May Christ always present among us draw us to all to himself. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We ask, Lord, that you bear up those who sink beneath the waves of pain and sorrow. Help them to see, see a new light and find their way through the pain and the sorrow. Bring them close to you in perfect trust. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive, Lord, into your care the dead who have heard and trusted in your word. Have mercy on those whose faith was weak, but who in their lives sought to reach you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all ever and ever. Amen. We stand to sing our offertory hymn, which is 129. <coughs>
your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.